PCB design starts with a blank canvas. Click on the Add Components button to bring up the components overlay. You can expand this if you'd like to see more, and you can scroll inside. There are three tabs, 123D Components, All Components, and My Components. 123D Components are created by the 123D Circuits team and are verified components. All Components contains tens of thousands of components created by our users. My Components is just the components that I myself have created. Let's go to 123D Components and shrink this down a little. I'd like a VCC and a resistor. And when I click on these, they attach to my mouse. And I'd like an LED and a potentiometer and a ground symbol. To get the components overlay to disappear, I just click on a blank part of the canvas, or I can click on Add Components again. I would like another resistor and another LED, so I can hold down Shift and drag a box, and now they're both selected. And if I copy and paste, I have another set of them attached to my mouse. I'll click once to let go. Now it's time to add wires to connect the components. What I'll do is mouse over a terminal, and it highlights. When I click once, a wire is attached to my mouse. And when I get to another terminal and click, the wire is added. And now these components are attached. So if I move this component, the wire stays attached to both of them. And now I notice I'd like to rotate this potentiometer. I'll select it, and I can press the Rotate icon. If I hold Shift, it will rotate counterclockwise. I can also rotate by touching the R key on my keyboard. This is the configuration I like. Let's complete the wiring. I've now created a simple circuit in the schematic editor. I'd like to add a couple more components though so that I have a way to connect power to my circuit on a PCB. I'll go back into components and I know I'd like a specific component so I can type in its name, block and I'll get the connector screw terminal block. When I click this, it's attached to my mouse, and I'll put this here. I could just connect this with wires, but if I didn't want to do that, and I wanted to delete just that segment of the wire, I would select it and delete just that segment of it. What I'd like to do is take this symbolic connector, copy it, and paste it, and put it here, and connect these. And now if I give these the exact same name, they will be symbolically connected on the PCB. Now it's time to lay out the PCB. Here is the icon that takes you to PCB view. And now we're in PCB view. The first thing you'll notice is the components are all stacked on top of each other. This is called a rat's nest. And I'm going to do what's called placement and put them in roughly where I want them. These are surface mount resistors and surface mount LEDs, but these are through-hole components, and I'd like to make them all through-hole components. So I will select my resistor and click the Change Footprint button. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And I will choose this one. And I'll do that to the other resistor. And for the LEDs, I'd like to have five millimeter LEDs, and there's a five millimeter LED. And let's get this one out of the way, and we'll do that here too. Okay, so now all of my footprints are chosen. Let's finalize placement. I'd like to rotate this, so I can do it with the rotate button, or I can do it with the R key on my keyboard. And that's fine like that. And I'm gonna just take a moment to place my components on the PCB. Now you'll notice I grouped my components somewhat close together, and that's because PCBs typically cost more the larger they are. Now I'll trim my PCB, and I will come down and I'll select an edge, and I'll move it up. And you'll notice that as I make the area of the PCB smaller, the price goes down. So let's make this even smaller. That's good. One other thing to notice is, if I wanted to, I could skew the corners of the board, and I could make pretty much any shape I wanted. And if I double-click, I get a Bezier curve, 
and I can change the shape of the board. And now's when I can double click again and create a pretty complicated board shape pretty easily. Let's click the undo button to get it back to a rectilinear shape. Now I'd like to route some traces. I'm going to zoom in with the wheel on my mouse or use two fingers of the trackpad. And I'm going to get the copper trace tool because these green lines are only symbolic of electrical connections. They are not actually connections yet. So I use the copper trace tool. I'll choose an appropriate width. I like to route with as wide a trace as I can get away with on a specific board. So I'm going to use a power trace and I'm going to click and this will begin the routing. And you'll notice a trace is attached to my mouse and the trace has an elbow. If I right click, the direction of the elbow changes. These are perfectly lined up. So when I click on the end of the net, the trace is routed. Let's try that again. Here's this one, and now it's routed. And how about this one? I could go around the corner with this one quite easily and come back over here, but I'm actually gonna show you how to do it on the bottom side. So if I go layers and click bottom, now I'm looking at the bottom of the board and I go back to the trace tool. And now when I route the trace, it's blue because it's routing on the bottom side of the board. If I go back to the top layer, I can see this blue trace is on the bottom. Now I'd like to show you how to route a trace that starts on one layer and finishes on another layer. Let's route this trace. And here I will click and I will go up to the layers and I'll click on bottom. And now a via has been created right there. When I finish routing the trace, you see that it started on the top and it came through a via that was automatically generated and it finished on the bottom. So we're almost done routing. Let's go back to the top where we have our ground connection going to the center pin of the potentiometer. I'd actually like to do a ground pour or a copper pour. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to grab copper pour and I'm going to do just like I was doing with the trace tool, but I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this outside of the boundary of the circuit itself. And now I'm going to start clicking and create a box that goes around the PCB's outline. And when I get back to the end and I click something that overlaps, the copper pour will be finished. And as you can see, now the ground pad has these thermals that connects it to this entire ground pour. And so does the ground pad of the potentiometer. If I wanted to add some labels, I could click on the text tool and click. And now I can select that and I may end up calling this GND, and I'll change the size from 12 down to six, and I will rotate this to signify what is what. And since I like this orientation, I can copy and paste this, and I have another one on the mouse, and here I will say five volts. So now we've labeled our board. And last but not least, I may want to give this board a real name instead of the unnamed circuit. So I will click on this and it will bring us into the settings tab. And instead of the unnamed circuit, I may call it simple LED and potentiometer board. I can add a summary. I can add a more detailed description. And this is where I can embed a video or pictures or URLs using markdown syntax. I can add tags. And this is where I can give access to someone like a friend that I want to be able to edit this at the same time as me. So I'll select Rob Roberts. And when I click invite, an email is sent to him with the URL of the circuit. And when he clicks on it, it will open up the editor and we can both edit at the same time. So I'm going to go back to schematic view. There's our schematic. Here's PCB view. And this is the bill of materials. This tells us everything that's in our circuit. And this is the settings tab. So there you have it, the basics of PCB design in 123D circuits. Go ahead, try it for yourself.